Hi, Matt Bennett here. Thanks for being part of the great experiment. We are seeking the Lord to do something extraordinary and wonderful during these 10 days. I look forward to testimonies coming in from across the country as people share what they done, how the Lord's opened doors, as the Lord opened doors for them to witness, and people coming to faith in Christ. Every time we do these great experiments, we hear stories of God changing lives and doing some wonderful things. So thank you for participating in this with us. And as you know, we send out videos morning and evening for each of these 10 days to stimulate and to bring us together as a community. And as I mentioned in my uh, previous video, I am in Fiji Islands. A number of us from Christian Union are here to learn about revival. Uh, communities here for 20 years have been experiencing God in extraordinary ways. And the Healing the Land team goes from village to village, and uh, some who have never had them come before, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of villages here in Fiji, 300 islands, 200 of them are inhabited, and then I don't know how many villages there are. There are hundreds. There's about 900,000 people in Fiji. So uh, the stories have been absolutely extraordinary and wonderful and faith-building for all of us. And I mentioned in the other video how each of these uh, communities, they have a, a number of major sins that need to be repented of as a community. And it's prompted discussion among us and our team thinking, well, what are the major issues in our cities, in our, in our nation? I live in New York City and uh, we all live here in the United States. So what are the three, four, five major sins that we need to confess. One of the ways of thinking about this is it's sins that typically affect both Christians and non-Christians because it's so heavy, it's so dominant in the land. And so one thing I think of here is this passage in 1 Timothy 5. This is a passage that talks about widows and the conditions under which widows would be financially supported by the church. And they had to meet certain criteria to do that. They needed to be a certain number of years old. They needed to have been faithful to their husband. And then it also says this um, in uh, 1 Timothy 5. It says, She who is truly a widow, left all alone, has set her hope on God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who is self-indulgent is dead while uh, she lives. Uh, commend these things as well. Command these things as well so that um, they may be without reproach. So you have this situation where a widow, if she's not continuing to pray day and night, she's considered self-indulgent and dead while she's still alive. And that's very sobering. And I think about that from the United States. I think among Christians and non-Christians, we've become self-indulgent. We don't take the time to fast and pray. We don't take the time to tend to Jesus Christ's priorities over our own priorities. There's nothing wrong in enjoying life and doing good things, but when the good things outpace uh, the things that the Lord requires us to do, then we become self-indulgent. And as it says of the widow here, dead while we're still alive. And so I believe as a nation, we need to repent of being self-indulgent as communities, as families. And that means at night, turning off the Netflix, turning off these other things and having a family devotion or a morning devotion or fasting. And yeah, food tastes good, but sometimes you got to fast and also pushing yourself out to witness and doing things, uh, things that'll cost you and be difficult uh, because the Lord wants you to, even though it's much easier to sit back and enjoy ourselves with sports and all these other things. Again, there's nothing wrong with those things in of themselves, but if we become a lover of pleasure, a lover of self, we must repent or else we will not experience the Lord in the way he's designed us to, uh, to experience. So thank you for being part of day and night. I'm very glad that you're doing this great experiment with me and so many others. I'm excited about my Joshua Faith Challenge, which will be coming up here in a few days, I'll do. I return to the States in a couple of days, um, and uh, we'll see what the Lord does. So thank you so much, and God bless.